Another example. Feel okay? <laughs> um, the economy. Okay, so I remember I shared about the market economy. Market economy means we have hundreds of words to describe the market economy. You know, the, all the economic language that we hear everywhere from, from prices to interest to compound interest to rates to currencies to money to hundreds of words to describe this reality. When it comes to going into the gift economy, we have less than 10 words to describe it. Fuzzy words, not precise words. Kind of gentle, woo-woo, nice guys, nice want to, you know, wanna be <laughs> guys. Quote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, well, we have a super, super complex and rich system with the gift economy, but we haven't a language yet to to describe that. So I decided myself that I would jump in the gift economy in my life. And believe me, I don't live in a place, you know, France, like many Western countries, gift economy, they don't know. It does not exist. The law does not even allow it. If someone makes me a gift, then it has to, uh, people have to consider it as a salary or anything for buying and selling stuff, not a gift. So the law, the law leaves very, very little space for what we call a gift, okay? But I decided I would live in the gift economy. It means that whatever I can offer, some expertise on collective intelligence, my time, anything that I know, I offer it. And whatever material wealth that comes to me comes as a gift. So the food I eat, I receive it as a gift. The place where I live in France, I had it as a gift. Everything that I have, even my clothes here, came as a gift. I think I don't have many things left that haven't come as a gift. And I don't have many things. But I claim that living in the gift economy doesn't mean poorism. You know, like surviving. People ask me, how do you survive? I say, I don't want to survive. <laughs> Not interested in surviving. I want to thrive. Which means the gift economy, I hold my, inside myself the architecture that what will come to me comes from desired riches from food, the most basic things, or shelter, to what a, you know, a beautiful piano, for instance. I want a beautiful piano, by the way. <laughs> okay? Not just the survival things. And I learned the language to describe this gift economy. I learned how to coach the gift economy so that today I can operate with conventional market and conventional uh, companies. And when some CEO calls me and say, uh, Mr. Nobel, could we do something together? Then I ask, okay, what do you want to do? And I check. Well, if it means selling more stuff, I say, not interested. You have lots of very good consultants for that. But I will ask this person, what makes you wake up in the morning? What makes you get out of bed in the morning? And then we start to have a deep conversation. And usually I see lots of wonderful people in the conventional world who want to do something to evolve society, but they do it with the old means, with the market economy, with a company, and so on. And I say, well, why don't we try, I mean, I hear your project, why don't we try to make a win, 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 win project? That means you, you don't have winners on one side and losers on the other side. Usual losers means workers in India, China, Pakistan, you know. Usual losers means nature, environment, society, and so on. Why don't we have a project together where everyone wins? Environment, workers, market, you, me, everyone. So that means a specific social design. I also learned uh, how to coach them in order to become generous themselves. Like we will do a project together, I give you my time, you give something, you, you give forward to someone else. You can give to me if you want to, but we don't make it as an exchange. I had some conversations with people in Oroville who want to live in the, in the gift, or do live already in the gift economy. For instance, one of the common mistakes they make, they say, I do this for free. Ouch. No. You don't do it for free. 
because free and paying belongs to the old market economy. When you do something in the gift economy, you do it just for offering, for gifting. Done. You don't have to say, to claim it as, as free. Okay? So you see, we, we have to learn a new language, very precise, very sharp. And I have some conversations with people in, uh, in Oroville who want to really shift or to improve their gift economy, and then they realize how much they need to learn and to go into an engineering, super precise engineering, not just, you know, thinking that, oh, I will offer and everyone will give me something. Some of them did that and had a very, very harsh experience because other people still live in the, in the market economy. Okay?